uh, to episode 10 of Sommelier this week, where uh, Jack and I update you on what has happened uh, in Sommelier as we uh, take this road to Mainnet. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I think it's a week after the, the bloodbath and prices are recovering and folks are shaking it off. Jack, welcome. How are you doing today? How are you coming? I'm playing uh, Taylor Swift Shake It Off on repeat in my headphones. Nice, um, nice. Great. <laughs> that video is fantastic, by the way, as well, if, if anyone's interested. Um, yeah, but yeah. I'm just, um, I'm just that weirdo. That's um, all right. Anyway. Be before my time, I'm a, I'm a, you know, pre-millennial millennial. So I don't think I, you know, ever got into Taylor Swift. Is, is she like 50 right now or? After, after your time. Um, <laughs> after my time. Thanks. I just aged myself by saying it was before my time. <laughs> yeah. Um, t- Taylor, Taylor Swift is like the uh, Britney Spears of 15 years later. Got it. Okay. And we all need a Britney yeah. Spears. So we do. Um, uh, and, and so I guess maybe my question is, you know, with that musical vibe in, in mind, um, uh, we've had another week um, and very exciting. So we are, uh, I guess this week has been, um, this past week, very exciting because it seems to me that the protocol team, you guys have uh, made massive strides on the refactoring. Congrats. Um, I know refactoring is always tough, but um, you guys pulled it together. You have now um, working, you know, working nodes. Uh, super excited to learn more. Like, what's happening with the protocol? A lot of people are asking us, yeah. "Where's the protocol?" So, what's up? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, we've been talking quite a bit about the gravity refactor. We've gotten that past the point where, uh, where we're sort of flying blind. I think anyone who's completed a large refactor of a system that has a working state in it there's a long time during the refactor where you're in a broken state and you have no way to run tests. Um, and especially with compiled languages like Go, uh, you can get into a state where you don't even compile for a while. Um, I think we were in the non-compiling state for about two weeks, um, in the compiling but not running state for about a week. And now this week has all been compiling, running, and the tests run. Uh, which makes the development a lot more easy. Um, you know, people talk a lot about test-driven development. Um, and when you're refactoring large systems, I think it's critical because you have these tests that tell you what proper uh, what, what proper system functioning is. So uh, a, a much easier spot in the debugging world now um, and pushing through the last remaining issues with the refactor so that we have uh, a production gravity bridge. Um, there's also a little bit of work going on to wrap the command line interface that most users are going to end up uh, using the bridge through uh, into a cleaner uh, into a cleaner environment using something called Abscissa, which the inclusion team has uh, developed uh, and is probably the most popular Rust-based command line tooling framework. Um, so we're putting that into a command line uh, tooling framework, uh, adding better key management on that and uh, making it configuration driven as opposed to sort of like flag driven um, for a much nicer CLI experience. Um, so no more, the no combination- more uh, Line bash, bash files? Yes, ideally not. Um, you know, the folks who have used the Cosmos CLI are familiar with sort of my philosophy on CLI design. When you write out a CLI command, it should sound a lot like English and it should describe what you're doing. So when you say like gravity transact with right. the bridge right. send to cause send to Ethereum, yeah. like it's very clear what's going on, and then the arguments are like your receiver over there and how much you're sending, and then you sign and it's done. Right. Um, so you know, trying to follow those idioms that we've established um, and, and make it make it a nicer user experience. Um, and, and with that, we've been doing a lot of work on testing um, that that's going to inform how we're going to build out the rest of Sommelier protocol, which they're happy to chat through. Awesome. Awesome. I, I think uh, testing, you know, is is definitely great. I think given that, you know, you're going to be managing, um, you know, billions of, of uh, dollars in value, if not trillions of dollars in value in people's money, um, you want to have test coverage, um, you know, on it. I think maybe one of the questions I have is, um, you know, what happens once you've done the testing? Like, you know, once you've reached a satisfactory level of test coverage, um, what what's next for you and the protocol team as you guys hit that milestone and and when do you want to cover that? You know, I, I don't think it's necessarily like a satisfactory level of test coverage. Right. You know, I, I think every system that you end up building needs 
if you're building something non-standard, and we definitely are, it needs its own sort of testing framework that has to continually evolve along with the complexity that you're building into the program. Mm -hmm. um, so we, what we've sort of found is that, you know, through this building of the gravity bridge and debugging it, we need to put in more effort into this testing framework. And that's really because gravity bridge is a component of sommelier and sommelier has actually more components. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. the, the work that we've done on the gravity bridge testing framework is going to inform what we're building in sommelier. Excellent. And, that testing framework is actually going to have to evolve alongside the full production system that we're building as well. Right. So over the next two weeks to a month, there's uh, there's two main thrusts of work. Integrating the seller contract that we've been working on and getting that tested and optimizing um, and finishing up the allocation module, i.e. feature development. And then the other piece that comes up alongside that is test framework development that helps validate the feature development that's going on in parallel. And then once we have, once we sort of meet in the middle with both of those, where we have all of the features that we want working in the test harness, then we go to test net, boom. Um, and that gives us a lot more assurance uh, when we get to test net that we're not gonna be dragging 20 to 30 validators um, into a five day pain fest where uh, they don't have any idea what's going on and there's not a working system, right. which uh, I, I have been there before. It's no fun. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so uh, that, that's, that's the main plan over the next, uh, over the next two weeks to a month. Um, I've got that outlined in an issue, which I will mm -hmm. share as soon as we've sort of groomed that a little bit. Um, but again, the major pieces there are the seller contract, the yeah. allocation module, and yeah. then the gravity bridge. And, and yes. basically the initial version of sommelier is the sum of those three things. You no, know, those are awesome and it's totally scoped. Question for you, you know, some users are asking, uh, community members are asking about documentation. Yeah. Will documentation be ready? Um, is documentation part of this uh, integration or testing roadmap that uh, you, you know, that we now are going to take on? That's a great question. I think documentation is a critical part of any production system. You have to understand how it works. Uh, so there's multiple layers of documentation that we're going to end up needing to write here. One is gravity bridge documentation. Luckily, the Althea team has been working really hard to produce a lot of documentation for that. And through this bridge refactor process, we've also produced documentation on the bridge. The command line tooling that's being built right now also has its own form of documentation. And you know, I think in a way, most command lines that run against APIs are basically a living form of documentation for a system. So each of the components will have its own documentation. And then the whole system running together will have very focused pieces of documentation initially that describe to users how the whole system works um, as a whole. Um, and we'll just continue to develop that whole system documentation as we run into questions from users. But my sort of strategy on documentation has always been um, when people ask you questions, write documentation for it so that you don't have to answer the same question twice. Right. But what that ends up doing is that you start with less documentation and then you build it out in response to what the users want. Got it. Got it. So really rolling documentation. You know, yeah. as, as people ask, this is great. Well, this is awesome. Um, and I think uh, what's I think you have stuff coming up on the app side. Is there new things happening on 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 your app team that uh, you think would be really interesting for the similar community to look at coming up next week? We talking about money? Uh, well, I was talking about uh, yeah, like new UI, like you know, potentially new. Yeah. UI. So people should take a look. Like people should look out for this new yeah. stuff that uh, should be on its way, right? Yeah, you know, and so we were talking about sort of bringing the testing framework and the feature development together as well. And another piece that we're going to be integrating over the next month is the app. And all of these features with a position manager that's coming out soon, the ability to rebalance easily, add, remove liquidity. As we begin to ship the rest of these features, those are the necessary features for supporting sellers in production. So. All of this stuff is going to kind of come together over the next month, um, and there's a lot of integration to be done. Uh, but the app is continuing to ship features. You know, the right. the key part of this protocol development and the way that we've architected this system so far in, in this company really um, is that we can run all of these experiments independently and bring them together 
into more powerful systems to help uh, spur adoption. Got it. No, I absolutely agree. Congratulations. Looking forward to seeing and talking with you about uh, this new stuff coming down the pipe in the coming weeks. Um, and looking forward to seeing us, uh, you know, continuing to report together with you on the progress of testing. I'm sure yeah. that uh, lots of new stuff's going to happen. And uh, as we head off to the next test nets and eventually mainnet. Yeah, absolutely. I'm could not be more excited. Um, the progress that we've made over the last few weeks is fantastic, and it, I, I'm really excited where we are right now. You Got know, it. it's just uh, all coming together. Got it. Well, let's keep it going. Thank you so much, yeah. Jack. Until next week. Until next week. All right, shake it off.